Hi guys, in this section, um, we will be discussing angles that are greater uh, than 360 degrees. Um, I had um, given you a heads up in the previous video that we're going to quickly look into this. Um, we have already looked at um, negative angles and I've given you a, an example on how to deal with those. So here I will also do the same thing, take you quickly through um, this thing, how it works and what can we do when we encounter angles that are greater than uh, 360 degrees. So what happens in essence, if, 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 if you have an angle that is greater than 360, it means it's an angle that can maybe end there, or it can even go round and round. It just depends how, how many times they wanna mess up with your head. But the idea is really simple. Whether it is sine or it is cosine, or it is the tangent, the idea is essentially the same. What is really happening there is that you've got an angle of theta, okay? But what they have done is that maybe they, uh, they go a revolution, 360 times something, okay? So in, in the case of one, you know it's gonna be a 360 reduction, that's okay. But in the case of two, then you're gonna have theta plus 720 degrees, okay? If k is equal to two, okay? Sometimes it does not even get to that. Um, they just decide, okay, we're gonna give you a 540. So you gotta think about this. Okay, what is the difference between 540 and 360? That is basically 180, but you know at 360, that's a complete revolution. So now they are saying basically this thing, you can rewrite it as three as, as theta plus what? 180, which is 180 plus theta, okay? So what have I done here? I basically subtracted 360. You can do the same thing here. If you subtract 360, you're gonna be left with 316 and subtract again. So you can just do a 720 and you realize you are left with a theta there. Uh, and, and so you can, then start working on, a, on the ratio that you are given. So that, that is basically the drill, guys. That's how it is gonna work. And I know I have kind of confused you maybe. Um, and so I'll just take an example because that's the easiest way to uh, and internalize these concepts. So let's take an example. Consider, for example, they want you to reduce or figure out what sign 570 is, <clears throat> okay? As I said, again, we know first of all that, okay, this thing is surely theta, okay, plus 360, okay, somewhere there. But how do we find the other angle? <clears throat> so it's simple, okay, what is 570 minus 360? 210, okay, so, that means this thing here is actually uh, can be written as 210 plus 360, or you can say 360 plus 210, that's okay. But you realize, what is this? This is a reduction of what? 360 plus theta, okay? Theta plus 360 is the same as 360 plus, th three, uh, plus theta. So we know the reduction of 360 plus theta, okay, which is just the same as the reduction of what? Theta plus 360, because they are both positive. This should just give me what? Sine theta, because it takes you to the first quadrant, okay? So we can just write this as 210, sine 210. Of course, in this case, theta is not acute. So now we gotta reduce this nicely by the use of what? Special angles, yes. So what is this in terms of a special angle? This will be 180 plus 30, okay? And we know this is a reduction of 180, okay? Maybe I should take a different color. We know that this is a reduction of 180 plus theta, which takes us in quadrant three, and sine is negative there. 
And uh, so this should be minus sine 30, which should be minus one over two. See how I got to that quickly? Because I, I'm quite familiar with my special angles. So I will stress once again, the importance of knowing your special angles. By the way, notice something guys on reductions, the reductions 90 uh, plus minus theta will require you to change to a co-function, okay? Co-function, um, there's a video in which I discuss co-functions and then the reductions 180 degrees plus minus theta or 360 degrees plus minus theta, um, they you just, you don't change the ratio remains the same, okay? No change of, um, of ratio. So in other words, sine will remain sine, cos will remain cos, tan will remain tan. Here, we know that sine goes or changes to cos, or cos can change to sine, or tan can change to the cotangent. That's what we have established, right? I just felt I should say that. Um, so that uh, <clears throat> you have some clarity. And then moving on, let me take another example. Maybe I'll take the one of a negative angle to show you that it does happen that you get reduction, uh, uh, angles that are greater than 360, but they are negative. So here I have cos of negative 480, but we know uh, by rule that, okay, cos of a negative angle does not really change that much. And so we have 480 now. We know 480 actually, it is 360 plus something. And what is that thing? Again, 480 minus 360, okay? You're gonna punch that in your calculator, that's fine. And then you see that, oh, that should be a 120. And then what is the, the reduction of 360 plus theta? We said the ratio does not change, so cos remains cos, and it must be cos 120. Now, how can I express cos 120 in terms of a special angle? There are two ways to do this at this point, and so I will do both ways for you, okay? I'll do one on one side and the other. You could say cos 120 is the same as cos 180 minus 60, okay? If that is the case, then you know, by the way, I'm just continuing with this problem there, so you know it's a, redu a 180 reduction cos is negative in the second quadrant, so this should be minus cos 60. 60 is indeed a special angle, and it is in, the, in, in terms of cos, cos 60 is negative one over two. Alternatively, you could have gone ahead and said, well, cos 120 is actually the same as cos of what? 90 plus 30. Now, this is a 90 reduction. So that means cos will change to sine. So first of all, I must change to sine and cos is negative in the second quadrant. This is the quadrant where we have 90 plus theta. So cos should be negative here. And then I must have what? 30 and we know sine 30 is one over two. So that's how you could have gone about this again. Uh, just an important note, guys, angles greater than 360, you, and, uh, you gotta just see what is the difference between that number and 360, and then you just roll with it, okay? So that shouldn't be a problem. I think that should be uh, quite good and nice. You should like it and um, you should have had some nice basic understanding, right? In the next section, we are gonna start now looking at identities. Um, and, uh, and then after we have done some of these identities, we will look at the, uh, what we call the general solutions. And as a matter of fact, maybe what I'll do before getting into identities, I will show you how to use more of this reduction formula uh, in, in, you know, in, in solving or simplifying rather trig um, expressions. And as I said, these are just routine uh, uh, procedures. The general solutions 
a more of complex uh, procedures because they deal with trig equations really and uh, of different forms and then uh, that uh, that needs really um, for us to go at the snail pace um, so that you guys can digest this and get it all good so um, otherwise from here we will um, um, we will meet again when I discuss more examples on uh, the use of reduction uh, formulae. This was in a special of in a, in a case of special angles. I will do it now in a case of non-special angles. Okay, or non-special numerical uh, angles. Okay, so see you later. <laughs>